Hi there. Terry Bailey, Senior Minister of Indian Run Christian Church in East Canton, Ohio. I want to talk uh, with you a little bit about songs and singing in the Bible. And let me start with these words from David, the chief songwriter of the Bible. Psalm 96, the first three verses. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. Tell of his glory among the nations, his wonderful deeds among the peoples. This was advice that David gave, and in this instance, at least, David faithfully took his own advice. If you've read the book of Psalms, you know that he wrote many songs, and what was going on is exactly what he said here. A new song is needed continually because God is always doing a new thing, a wonderful work among this people, a mighty wonder among those of the next generation. And when God does a new thing, David thought there ought to be a new song. For his own time, if you go back and read the sixth chapter of First Chronicles, you find out that David kind of institutionalized this, appointing people who would function as songwriters and singers and instrumentalists to lead the nation of Israel in worship and who would always be writing new songs as events transpired. You skip over to Nehemiah, the 12th chapter, and you also discover that at the end of the Babylonian captivity, this practice was reinstituted in the new temple and the new worship of Israel, that they appointed people who would write new songs as events happened and lead the nation in them. This was such an important part of the religious life of the people of Israel. It should probably be an equally important part of our life, and I believe that it always has been. One sermon series that I have written, and which of course I can't go through in any detail here, uh, picks this up, and it's an exercise that, that I have done over the years. When I look at a song, I look at the date of its composition, and then I look back in history and find out what was going on in the culture at that time. It's an amazing way to study hymns, and I highly recommend it to anyone because hymns that were written at the time of the Great Depression have a character of their own that is very worthwhile. Hymns that are written in the course of the Civil War or of World War I or World War II have a character of their own and a unique message formed by the working of God in that time. Backing up again to the Civil War, think of the Battle Hymn of the Republic and really consider those words. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. And see how those people understood the events of their time. And someone wrote a new song for us, an old song, for them new, and it has preserved the truth of their walk with God through the ages and is still meaningful for us today. I'm all for the new contemporary songwriters. I always have been, because as much as I appreciate the old hymns, God is still doing things today, and somebody needs to sing about them in modern voice with modern instrumentation so that the works of God in these days 
will be known to those who come after us. I don't know who will write the songs about the pandemic. Both pandemic and corona are very hard to rhyme, and I would not like to be tasked with that particular selection. But I expect that songs will come out of this time. Not just because this is a time of trial, which it is, but because God is always doing new things. And He will do new things in these days of pandemic, in our days of reopening and in recovery, in these days of shaken national relationships and all the other confusion that arises and will arise, God is going to do new things. And I look forward to hearing the new songs that will arise from it. Uh, I'm going to, in installments to come on this devotional series, look at songs that were new at the time in the course of the Bible and kind of work my way through a little bit. And I hope that'll be a profitable exercise for us. For the moment, will you pray with me? Father, I ask that you give us eyes to see the works that you do in our times specifically the works that you do, the wonders among the peoples in this time of pandemic chaos. And I pray that you fill our hearts with songs that will be sung for years, decades, and centuries to come so that those who follow us will know what you have done. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.